Hello, hello. We are now here to do the Angel Lady Movie Talk number five. This is our fifth session where we are diving into the wonderful themes that are part of our story and a huge uh, issue that is presented with our lead character, Ella, is the fact that she is just out of prison. And I have to say that one of the most amazing books that opened my eyes to the reality of what I was writing through the deep character is this book called The Slumber Party from Hell. It was written by an amazing woman named Sue Ellen Allen who at the age of 57 entered prison for a seven year stretch in Perrysville, Arizona. The people we are going to be talking to today are so special. They are connected to Sue Ellen through their heart, through their work with her. They knew her and they worked with her on her amazing program, developing a system for introducing people like me into the world of re-entry and the difficulties that the formerly incarcerated have when they get out of prison. Sue Ellen described re-entry as being shot out of a cannon into a brick wall. And that image has stayed with me all through the, our discussions. The people that I'm going to be introducing to are, are First of all, um, people who are doing the most important work I can see right now in our culture, which is bringing an invisible population into the light and helping them find their lives, restart their lives. And today, this, today is the first day of <clears throat> Second Chances Month, and we are kicking off Second Chances Month by having this discussion about Sue Ellen Allen and about presenting second chances. So our first guest, and I'm going to need to read this a little bit, so bear with me. Our first guest is going to be Shamaya Lodge. And Shamaya Lodge is a human resource leader with over 15 years as a corporate professional. She is a certified diversity, equity, and inclusion expert, and a fellow at CEO Action for Racial Equity where she leads a corporate engagement strategy focused on mobilizing untapped talent by destigmatizing re-entry through support of fair chance hiring. Yes. She is an interim president of Reinventing Reentry, started by Sue Ellen Allen. So hello, hello, hello. Let's find. Okay. Uh, hello, Shamia. Can Hi, you unmute Sherry, How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm just great. I'm so I'm I'm so excited to start our conversation with the first question, which is how did you meet Sue Ellen Allen? Where were you in your life? What were you up to? Yeah, so really great question. And thanks for, for having me and thanks for hosting this important conversation in honor of your amazing movie that you're you're that's coming out. And as we center some of this conversation on Sue Ellen. So I had the pleasure of attending a women's conference and Sue Ellen was on the piano and it was a multi-generational, multi-experience um, piano. And she was there talking about her experience. And we didn't, we didn't cross paths at that, at that very moment, but I'm like, wow, this lady's a force to be reckoned with. It was through um, the organizer of that conference who is a mentee of mine and a mentee of Sue Ellen. And so um, the Obama Foundation was having this amazing cohort opportunity out here in Phoenix, Arizona. And so I emailed my mentee and I said, oh my gosh, you have got to apply for this opportunity. So at the same time, Sue Ellen was emailing her and said, you have got to apply for this opportunity. And so sure enough, she ended up getting the opportunity and it was after her cohort and her experience, she wanted to bring the two people who sewed into her lives out for dinner. So we went out to eat, her, myself and Sue Ellen Allen was there. And I'll tell you, Sue Ellen Allen and myself, we closed down the restaurant. Literally <laughs> the owner came out and was like, five minutes, light's gonna be out. And so it was through that time, I got to hear a little bit more about Sue Ellen's story. Um, it was at that very moment, I um, was able to free myself and, and be very vulnerable. I have never 
until that day express to anyone um, outside of my family that I am just as impacted, which means I identify as one of the 25 million adult Americans who have an immediate family member currently incarcerated. Sue Ellen encouraged me to share my story and don't shy away from it because my brother who's incarcerated right now in the state of North Carolina needs my support. And she said, you never know who you meet and what support your brother can get by you sharing your story. So, so that's how I met Sue Ellen Allen. And it was at that moment, we were walking in the parking lot. She goes, I was studying for this huge test that I had to take to get registered at my organization. She said, listen, kiddo, if you do not pass that test for whatever reason, you have a place in my organization. I ended up passing the test, but she still offered me an opportunity on her board. And so, and, and now, now I'm here. Now you are here. You're here and your work. <clears throat> what was it about the, her work? The, um, what, is it, what is it about the program that Sue Ellen created that is worthwhile? What, what is the value that it has and what have you seen? Absolutely. So, Sue Ellen, by way of her work, and she'll she'll share this, and she shared this with many people. She says, "I'm a little I'm a little privileged old white lady, right? That wears real pearls." <laughs> she she said it was only when she got incarcerated did she realize how horrible the system was for many people, especially people from underrepresented communities, and so. She sees no color. She sees like she sees no race. She sees the money is not a factor for her. She really cares about people. And it's because of that, a lot of individuals have had an opportunity based off of her offerings. She understood that if you get the right people in the room and you tell them the right story, they will lean in and change some of the, the, the craziness that is that has to do with the system. And so she just had that power. She had the power to say, hey, look at me. And I actually was in prison. Douglas will share a story so I won't spin his, steal his thunder about you know, how they introduced themselves. Um, but that was who she was. And, and her work struck a core with me something different because again, I have not, for whatever reason, I, maybe I led from a place of being embarrassed but I have never shared my story about my brother. It, was, it took Sue Ellen Allen to say, no, 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 young lady. This is your truth. This is your honesty. And she just saw people as that. She just, she believes in everybody, regardless of your circumstances. And it's because of that, I, I leaned into this work as well. Well, what about the program then? Let's, let's talk about what- Yeah, let's talk about the involved. program. So reinventing reentry and assimilation, it's, it's all about bringing people together to ensure that, you know, they understand how hard it is for individuals to reacclimate into society after having been released um, from prison. And yeah. so the simu so just as a summary, what the simulation does is it, it, it gives real life experiences of what individuals may face, whether it's getting their driver's license, whether it's needing to um, get a um, housing, whether it's needing to get medical insurance, whether it's needing to get transportation to and from your probation officer or parole officer, regardless of your um, situation, it illustrates how hard it is to just have normal day activities because that record goes with you every single, like it's just, the system is not designed to help returning neighbors return home safely. Yeah. So the work, um, I know the, there was a period of time where, oh golly, everybody, everybody here was involved with the program in some way or another. And, and then Sue Ellen passed. And now that through the pause and through the COVID You've been reworking this, haven't you? Re-engineering it. Yeah. You're absolutely, you're absolutely correct. And and you know, I, I always like to say, you know, COVID um, was really hard on a lot of us, right? For a variety of reasons. Um, yeah. But what COVID was able to do, in my personal opinion, served it served as a great equalizer. And what I mean by that is Sue Ellen traveled across this country to bring her simulation in person to a lot of organizations who just by happenstance found out about her. What, what COVID has allowed us to do is rethink our reach. And so even prior to Sue Ellen passing away, we were forced to do just that. And so we've been working with some developers to bring an on-demand online version of the simulation. Yep. And of course, we're still going to be able to have a hybrid model where we're, we're traveling to campuses and doing the simulation in, per in person. 
But the beautiful thing about this hybrid um, approach and or this on-demand option is it reaches the masses. Anyone and everybody will be able to go online and partake in a simulation. And after they have experienced that simulation or those those, um, barriers that the simulation will bring out, they, they should be able to immediately go into action. And what I mean by that is it was Suellen's wish that folks just don't experience the simulation without walking away, deciding and thinking about what actions can they take to make a difference. And so Sue Ellen Allen, her initials S-E-A, what the overall theme of the simulation is, we really want to bring individuals from sympathy to empathy to action. And that's really her, that's her, that's the, her initials. And your action is with fair chance, isn't it? Is yes, it, ma'am. All right. <laughs> my action is what fair chance is by my work. My background is in human resource management. My special, I specialize in recruiting. And so it is my goal to ensure that individuals have the tools and resources they need so they can get seek meaningful employment upon release. Or even if they've never been to prison, if they have some level of um, conviction on their record, that they companies see them for who they are and hire them based off of their skills if they're the best candidate for the position. That's great. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, that's truly. Is there something that you wish people would know before we move on? Is there something that you just wish people who have never had any experience with the system, can they, something from your life that you wish they would know? Absolutely. It, it, is, it is hard. And I know as cliche as it may seem, it is really hard. Um, and maybe it's associated with our bias, right? But it's almost as if individuals have a second um, sentence when they come out. Because yeah. we as we, society as a whole put that label on individuals. And so what I really want individuals to know, and, and I'm I'm embodying my inner Sue Ellen here is you really have to see people for people. You re we really have to give individuals the chance that they deserve. And so Mm -hmm. my, my, my kind of feedback or or my wish and my hope and my prayer is that individuals start to see people as people. Thank you. you. I'm going to pick up Doug's bio (laughs) and introduce him. Douglas is our Douglas is our next Yes, and I'm going to highlight you, Douglas, right here. Um, Douglas, come on. Uh, Douglas, I would love for people to know more about Douglas Reed, his history, and how you happened to meet Sue Ellen Allen. Was it in Phoenix? What, what were you up to at the time? Oh, wow. Uh, once oh, again. I'm so sorry, but let me introduce you first because I did find <laughs> I found okay. the bio. I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous here, but I do want to read pe- to people to know so they know who you are. Excuse me, sir. I'm so sorry. Um, Doug Douglas McNeil Reed is a military veteran and a dedicated social justice mental health advocate. He currently serves as the director of partnerships to Black Men Heal. He has lectured in courses at Columbia University that address concerns regarding correctional systems and institutions. Doug is well known as a face, as the face of Black Men Heal and as the host of King's Corner, a free weekly virtual mental health support group that has serviced over 1,000 men across the country. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for being on the show. Welcome. Well, thank you, thank you for inviting me. Well, back to my question before I interrupted myself. <laughs> Tell me about your life and what connected you with Sue Ellen Allen. Where were you? Well, one of the things, um, uh, I'm retired out of the Federal Bureau of Prisons, um, and I had a desire to actually give back. You know, I was actually working in the Federal Bureau of Prisons at the height of uh, mass incarceration. And one of the things I wanted to do once I retired was to give back. Uh, just to rechannel that thinking, but for people to understand, uh, even as we're talking about second chances during this month. So um, I was watching the Van Jones Redemption Project, 
got uh, which van was going inside the prisons, talking to individuals that committed a crime against someone and uh, bringing them face to face with the uh, the victim's family. And he, they were hosting up in uh, NYU. So I got an opportunity to go up there and Dan was explaining about the show. And he asked Sue Ellen to stand up. He said, Sue Ellen, stand up. Let's, I mean, you know, tell them a little bit about yourself. Uh, and Sue Ellen stood up as gracefully as she is. And she said, um, you know, I'm formerly incarcerated, but I am a serial killer. And the crowd, like, you just heard a sigh, even myself. I was like, oh, my God, this this lady, you know, older white woman, red. I'm like, I really got to hear this. Like, she's a serial killer. Mm -hmm. And she said, yes, um, Frosted Flakes, Cheerios, Raisin Bran, and everybody just died. Uh, so that's, that changed the ice of it uh, with her bubbly personality. Uh, everybody was fabulous at the time. And once it was over, uh, everybody was, you know, real eager to go meet Van Jones. I was eager to meet Sue Ellen Allen. Uh -huh. I wanted to meet her. So when I went up to, to meet her and I introduced myself uh, and I told her I was trying to start a uh, nonprofit organization, but I also told her I was a CEO. Um, and she kind of, you know, kind of which, you know, drew back a little bit because, of course, being incarcerated for a certain period of time, there are some, re you know, there are some uh, hesitancy see uh, what COs, you know, some some good, some bad, and different. So, I'm uh, sorry, what does CO mean? A uh, correction officer. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. So she told me about her organization, and she told me, look, if you could will call me every Friday, I will tell you everything I know about nonprofit organizations and this field of uh, prison reform. So I called her every Friday, and we talked for hours. Um, I did get adopted. She adopted me as uh, as her son, uh, and I took that <laughs> title. And then uh, she told me about this re the reentry simulation, and she yeah. said, you know, well, Douglas, if if you would come out to Phoenix, Arizona, you know, we're having a simulation before the Arizona public defenders. I would be glad to show you exactly what we do. And, you know, like, I was like thinking like, you're crazy. <laughs> I've never been to Arizona, nor do I wish to go to Arizona, but I discussed it with my wife and I told her, I said, you know what? I really want to go to Arizona. Yeah. Um, and I went to Arizona and she uh, conducted the prison simulation for the Arizona public defenders. I think it was like 250. They broke them down. And I was truly amazed uh, about the um, the the impact that it had on those individuals for them to really understand the job that they do and the impact that it has on uh, individuals who have been justly uh, involved. Wow. Did you continue to work with her? Is that what I heard? Is that uh, yeah? So I continued to work with, with her. your mom. <laughs> as, as my mom, we traveled the country. Um, you know, we went to uh, university. Uh, our last stop was uh, March of what is that? Twenty nineteen? Is that twenty nineteen? I think, uh, which was with the Tennessee legislators right after the uh, uh, the tornado in Tennessee. And at the beginning of COVID, uh, where everybody was, you know, we, you know, we're going through airports, really trying to make a decision, like, you know, are we safe? And um, it was just, it was tremendous. It was a great feeling to be in that space with her. She would always introduce me as her adopted son, but she would also introduce me as uh, having the the empathy and then the caring as far as being working in the criminal uh, as a correction officer, understanding mm -hmm. the system, and yet being able to uh, voice my viewpoint in regards to people who have been affected in the system. So your sensitivity to people who have been affected by the system really is, um, it focuses on the mental health of, mm -hmm. of the uh, formerly incarcerated. Can you talk about that? What's going on in here? What's, you know, what, how, how do people need help? What do you see? Well, in so many different ways. I mean, be, being pulled away from uh, your family for a numerous amount of years, yeah. uh, that has an effect not only on you, but to your family and your friends. Uh, one thing that really comes to mind is being, uh, you know, as we say in solidarity, you know, solitude as far as going into what they call the hole, being locked up for 24-7. 
uh, seven days a week and only coming out for an hour, uh, you can only imagine the mental aspect of how that plays on your mind. Uh, and then actually being incarcerated for, you know, let's say uh, for any amount of time and then being released. One of the things I did uh, as a correction officer, I said process uh, guys in and out. And one of the things I used to ask guys, like, what are you going to do once you get out? You know, some of the answers guys told me, you know, you know my family's been able to uh, be with me and, you know, uh, that writing letters and there's been communication and then picking me up. And then I had some individuals said, you know, uh, look, CEO, uh, you gave me the clothes that I have on. Um, I really don't know what I'm going to do. You know, so that that effect, you know, from, you know, even from a, a mental aspect, it, it can play, you know, for lack of better words, it can play tricks on your mind. You know, your mind plays tricks yeah. on you. Well, I mean, what what is the organization doing now? I mean, you're Black Men Heal. Can you tell me about how you entered into it and what is it? The workshops and the work that you're doing sounds yeah, a, a, a lot very of that powerful. Was, yeah, a lot of that was uh, actually expressing what was going on uh, with the organization. I told Sue Ellen about it and she was, she was just excited as I was. She was, you know, everything is fabulous. And uh, Black Men Heal actually is an organization and I'm, uh, I went through the therapy personally. So I'm known as the client. Um, so I went through it uh, personally and the, what I got of, out of it was a, the ability to actually understand what, some of the traumas within my life. You know, Black Men Heal removes the stigma around mental health uh, we call cultural competency and actually pairing clinician and pro, uh, providers up of color to a, like a very intense matchmaking system. And we offer it to black men for free, 18 years and over. Wow. Wow. So uh, Terry will be posting your link in, uh, the, in the chat, but is there something that you'd like to say to folks who are um, hesitant about reaching out is there anything that you would like to say in terms of encouraging people to step up and step forward and contact you yeah i mean one of the things around mental health especially within the uh, within the black community um especially as a man we have a tendency as just being the provider and the progenerators that we are uh, mm -hmm. we put a lot of we put a lot of weight on our shoulders yeah. um and a, a lot of times we're, we can't handle that, uh, yet we won't never express it. We'll just carry that load. Uh, one of the things is, you know, even within the black community, how dare we step out of our families to, to express some things that are happening uh, within our family, uh, especially from a mental aspect. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's what Black Man Hill does. It removes the stigma around it. It's that, you know, even the we, we you discuss, I told something about King's Corner. It's a virtual free space that we open up because of the tremendous amount of applicants throughout the whole country applying for Black Man Hill. Uh, and that's a virtual free space that we invite guys in to talk about subjects that, that affect the Black community. Uh, and they, they come in that space and they open up. So with that, and people I've been on, you know, been able to, you know, be on the news or be in some kind of uh, spotlight for Black Man Hill, I express my vulnerability. People have seen me cry, in which I don't take, you know, I'm not sorry for what I did. It's just the fact that that's my feeling during that particular time, and that's where my heart is. So I have to express what's on my heart, and yet not feel the shame because I did in front of thousands of people or even a small amount of people. It really doesn't matter to me. Wow. That is a really important message for all of us, isn't it? Not, yes. to, not, to, not to judge ourselves for having feelings and trying to manage them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I know that Terry will post your link and will post your email. If you people would like to get in touch with Douglas, if you have a, a passion for the issue or you know someone who could use some counseling, please go ahead and contact him. Thank you so much, Douglas. The, uh, the, our next guest is someone who is filled with no judgment, just love. That is her mission. And that is Sharon Ray. Sharon, I am going to, again, read your bio on, excuse me, everyone for <laughs> this, but I want to get it right. <laughs> Sharon Ray works as a family and life coach, educating, inspiring parents and children to live together with love, respect, and cooperation. 
She is the founder of the Glo global movement, no judgment, just love. Sharon invites us to move beyond judgments that divide us and to consciously lead with love in our thoughts, words, and actions. Welcome, Sharon Ray. Thank you. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. Hi, oh, everybody. <laughs> Bringing Sue Ellen in the room. Oh, well, listen, you've changed my life. You brought me so much understanding and so many great people. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank it was my you. absolute pleasure. What a gift. What a gift. Let's talk about your encounter, your first encounter with Sue Ellen and the, and the work that you did parallel with her and then parallel to her with your program. Okay. okay. Well, so, yes. So Sue Ellen wrote <laughs> the book, The Slumber Party from Hell, <laughs> which it absolutely was. And her second editor was my editor at the time that I was writing a book as a family relationship coach, helping people through divorce. So Mary Holden, shout out to Mary Holden, um, connected the two of us. And Sue Ellen and I met in a little cafe in downtown Scottsdale. I happened to show her my movement at the time. I had these charms that I was offering to help people move the movement around. She immediately resonated with it. Give me that one off of your neck. <laughs> <laughs> and so just took it. And every time we interacted, she reminded me of how much those four words helped her, impacted her, and that they had to move around the world to do exactly what Shemaya said and exactly what Douglas said, people deserve to be people. And we must remove the labels, remove the stigma. And I'm with you in the black culture. I had my grandfather yell at me while I'm taking my dad to the hospital for mental health. And I'm trying to ask him about our history. He yelled at me in the car, that's private. <laughs> like, oh. Wait, what? <laughs> So I totally understand the value of removing that stigma and kudos to you, Douglas, for showing emotion in front of people. So Sue Ellen and I had the opportunity, she invited me to go with her to, it was in 2016, 2016 to Washington DC from Arizona with four other women for the United State of Women which was hosted by the Obama administration where I got to bring the message of no judgment, just love. Sue Ellen got to speak on a panel for prison reform. We shared a room for five days at a bedroom and it was just hilarious. She is a spitfire. Oh my goodness. This is, let me just. Douglas is laughing. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, so yeah, and from there, I attended as many of her events at the Arizona Capitol as I could. She had a day of empathy where she brought together legislators and uh, Shamaya, that's where I think you and I met with your husband. Um, and I just, I miss her, but I'm so grateful that we're all carrying her energy and moving her work forward. Okay, when I hang up on you, that means I can't talk to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hang so, up. <laughs> yes. No judgment. Just yeah. love. But I'll no chat at you later. <laughs> yeah. Let's let that was it, it, from your story, from what you told me, it felt it came inspired, didn't it? It was an inspiration. Can you can you talk about that? Yeah. Uh, you know, Sue Ellen had a way, just like Douglas recounted, of shocking you with her stories. I give you one little sentence and you'd go, what? And so from that, she really, you know, I haven't mastered it as much as she has, but she inspired me to do that as well in the way that fit my personality to really talk about an issue, which to me, having less judgment for each other and including ourselves and moving more to allowance and freedom to be who we are at every moment, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and speak of that, about that in a way that inspires people is what I got from her. And from that, I was able to, well, there are a lot of little things that happened synchronistically that came together where uh, in 2019, I got to deliver a reunification for women moms who are in prison at Perryville. 
Yeah. And, you know, intuitively, just from um, people being in prison physically is not dissimilar from the rest of us being in prison in our minds. That's right. And so from that, I had to create, I got the privilege to create a program for these women every day. And I didn't get a chance to really work on it until the night before, because I, unlike many people in this country, I've never been in prison. However, I've had family members that are. So I had some awareness, but I was not prepared for what happened when I went into Perryville, because it was at the end of October and there's little tiny uh, buildings off in the distance with very barren land around them. And I just came with the knowing that these women are magnificent. These women are valuable and something has happened around them to them that they did that crushed that awareness. So I walk in with just, Hey, I love y'all. And <laughs> The room was decorated in Halloween and they had their orange suits on. And I was like, yo, Matt, you decor. This is so cool. <laughs> and then started out with uh, delivering no judgment, just love. And what I saw was tense. You know, they were jovial with the judge, but very cautious. But once we started talking about no judgment, just love, shoulders relaxed. They sat back in their seats. And one woman who I could tell was, you know, a bit of a problem in the yard was telling me how she interacted with everybody. And once she embraced that message the next morning, she shared with all of these women, just like you, Douglas, being able to be vulnerable in front of a, an audience of your peers and said, you know, Sharon, that message really resonated with me. And I was kinder to people in the yard the next day. And from there, our next four days were just magical. And at the end, one of the things I asked these women if they would consider doing was now that they have gone through this change to write a letter to their family members, the people who cared for their kids while they were away, the people that they were in love with or was in love with them, the people that were their friends, write them a meet me now letter. And that meet me now is, this is who I was. This is who I am becoming. I would love to have a new relationship with you. This is how I'm forgiving myself. Those types of prompts. And they lapped it up so parched, like the, yes, we want to do that. We want to see people, us to want people to see us new. That is, what a, what a, what a gift, what a gift for you what a gift for them and what a gift for us that you are going to be carrying your, your the program the, it's a, the five day program that you did with this women these women you you're going to be looking to keep uh, keep that fresh and to be going back into prison there's also a program and you and i i think it's i think you have some partners in this you're going to be actually offering the family reunification, the program, the no judgment, just love for families. So this is like, this is so exciting. Please let's talk about that. Okay. And Shamaya is part of this. Shamaya well. and I had this conversation today yeah. and I yeah. see you're wearing a shirt and I want one because I want to make some that says RR and underneath family. Because as Douglas talked about, all of us, especially if you've been in a system like incarceration or military <laughs> or married, um, <laughs> we've all had some PSD, some post-traumatic stress from that. <laughs> and so we, we've put our love into the, the incarcerated person while they're there. We've put our love into them as they're trying to get out as Sue Ellen has done with the reinventing re-entry. I want to be adjunct to that, reinventing re-entry into their families and giving these tools that we give to the inmates, to the, the uh, ex-offenders, the people that are out in the world trying to make it, give their families that same support and knowledge and mental health awareness and forgiveness and no judgment, just love. So that when they send this letter, whoops, I'm starting to get a little emotional. <laughs> when they Aww. start to send letters like this, 
that this family knows sincerely what they've been through. And then they can embrace them just like we want society to embrace them. And remember that these humans are magnificent in who they are just as being humans. Stuff has happened to them that have caused them and us to forget that. And I wanna help bring that back. So I am in the process. I just had this epiphany just the other day because yes, I would like to be in the prisons, but I think this is an absolute valuable adjunct to that. And so I invite anybody who's listening to get a hold of Sherry as a general design, you know, I don't have anything about it yet. You can't really contact me, but if you contact Sherry and Sherry you would provide your email address and okay. just put in the subject line, Sue Ellen legacy, Sue Ellen legacy. Mm -hmm. And then whatever mm -hmm. emails Sherry gets, she will divide them up between Douglas, even Tom, when he speaks, if there's something for him and Shamaya and I, so you can help me build this out. I am open now for conversation with people that are families who've had the experiences, who can help me create a simulation just like for the inmates coming out for the families receiving them in. Brilliant. Brilliant. I, easy, my email. And Terry will again put it in the chat, but my email is Sherry, S-H-E-R-I, at angelladymovie.com. And I am honored to be a window through which people will throw their, their airplanes, you know, and to be able to um, keep supporting these. We're going to be coming back. I know we're going to be, we're going to be tracking what you're doing for, for a long time, of course, because it's so important. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Thank Sherry. You. Thank you, everyone. Tom, mm. uh, Tom, I, I'm, Brown, Tom Brown is our last and my next guest. And Tom, we've just met now. And I don't know very much about you, but I would love for you to introduce yourself and tell us about your relationship with Sue Ellen Allen and, and your work with her. Right. Welcome. <laughs> Thank Tom you. Brown. I am so grateful for this meeting. I wish Aww. I could just hug all of you. The loving energy here is tremendous. But uh, how did I meet Sue Ellen? Well, first of all, um, I was in prison and I met her husband, David, in prison. We were both teaching others. We were both Air Force pilots and we became best friends. And David keeps, uh, kept telling me, you know, I have the most incredible wife. You wouldn't <laughs> believe her. She's, she's a force of nature. And I thought, nobody could be that good. I, I'm sure he's exaggerating. And then I met her. Uh, the two of them met me at the gate when I walked out of prison. And, and I found out that he wasn't exaggerating at all. Not at all. She was an incredible person. And I am so honored to have been her loving partner for a number of years. Uh, I learned so much from her. First of all, her, her vulnerability. There's power and strength and freedom in being vulnerable. And she used to, when she got out, she would just freely walk up to people and say, hi, I'm Sue Ellen Allen, and I just got out of prison, and just to see what their reaction would be. And uh, uh, she has taught me to just simply be open, be vulnerable, be real. There was never a phony bone in her body. She was just loving people and being vulnerable about it. And uh, we had uh, so many adventures. Gee, she used to call <laughs> me on the phone and say, Tom, you want to go on an adventure? I said, <laughs> sure, let's go. And then she'd pick me up. And on the way to this adventure, whatever it was, she'd look over at me and she'd say, you don't have any idea where we're going or what we're going to do, do you? And I'd always say, no, but I don't need to know. All I need to know is we're going to enjoy this journey. We're going to have fun. And even if we go on a detour, we'll have fun with that, too. And it was fun to even go shopping with her, always. We would go to Costco early. Um, when it was for seniors and we'd go there early and we'd get in those electric carts and she'd look over at me and she'd say, you want to race? And I'd say, okay, let's do it. And we'd race down the aisle. 
Now, of course, they're, they're programmed to just go so fast. And we'd go along, but as we went along, she would always go just a little bit faster than I did. And I told her, I said, the reason for that is my cart has to carry more weight. That's the reason. <laughs> And the only way I can beat you is to cut you off at the corner, which I tried to do. But anyway, <laughs> life was always a grand adventure with Sue Ellen, always. And uh, uh, I love her passion, her compassion. She truly loved those women at uh, Perryville. She, yeah. And the compassion yeah. that she felt for them, the love she felt, uh, it was just incredible. And uh, so I'm living now in just some beautiful memories. And uh, I miss her so much, but uh, um, we had some incredible journeys. We really did, incredible discussions. And uh, uh, I'm just so grateful, so grateful for what you're all doing to carry on her work. You know, uh, Tom, I, I... I wasn't kidding. I, I, I think that this is one of the most important books about mm -hmm. being in prison for yeah. me, for my friends, for people who have lived a pretty protected middle class life, yeah. who have not had any contact, very, very, or very, very minimal contact with people That's who have right. been incarcerated and with the system because. Now that I know of what's happening in our with our tax dollars and to these people, um, it's just as Sharon was saying. I mean, I'm I'm horrified, and I'm really grateful for everyone here who has that heart um, and the passion and the and the guts mm -hmm. to get out there and to talk about it and to and to enroll people in doing something about it. Is there something that you would really like people to understand about being inside. Is there something that you think that people miss or on your re-entry? Let's ask it, talk about that. When you walked out, what, what, what was it like for you? Um, when I had lost everything, and I, I mean everything, lost it all, and faced a long prison sentence, I asked my inner self, what in the world is my purpose now? What can I do with this situation? And the answer I got from inside, five words, to be a loving presence. And I thought, wow, how do I do that? And I found it in teaching others. Uh, I had my own classroom, helped the fellows to get their GED, and in wow. writing articles, I wrote a lot of articles about the prison experience. And I'm still thinking, about that uh, message to be a loving president. How can I apply it today? What can I do? And I, it's all about helping others. And what an example she was in helping others. Uh, always looking for the good, always saying, how can I do something today that will make a difference? Wow. That, uh, what an inspire! What a, what, a, what a point in our culture for everyone to um, realize now that we are all in this together, and as we can help, you know, help someone up yeah. because we have to now. I just feel that. I feel that as we're if we're going to survive, we're going to start really caring about everyone. Um, That's right. Um, Anybody, is there anything that has come bubbled up while in our conversation? You know, why do we want to circle back um, based on what Tom just offered? Is there anyone with some last words before we sign off? I think we need to just remember that in the end, all that's left of us is our love. That's wow. all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shamaya. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Douglas. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for everyone who is tuning in now and will be watching this in the months to come. Please get engaged. Mm -hmm. We have so much to do and is so much to benefit.
all of us. It's for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming to Angel Movie, Angel Lady Movie Talk. AngelLadyMovie.com is our movie website. And we have a special page called Resources and Collaborators. And on that page, we will be posting these interviews and the links and other resources. So you can find out more about re-entry programs uh, and you can participate because it, this is not just a movie, it's a movement. It really is. So thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Sherry. Thanks, You're everyone. You're so welcome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your beautiful testimonies. Thank you. Thank you.